What's up guys and welcome back to another Creature Feature episode here on Shark Bites. I am so glad to be back on the Creature Feature hype for season 5 and boy have we got a goodie for you today. This shark was suggested by Heart Attack Insomniac and they want 60 seconds on the powerhouse that is the bull shark. Fortunately for you Heart Attack Insomniac, the creature features are no longer 60 seconds long so you're about to be treated to a good few minutes on bull sharks. Before we start though guys, if you enjoy the creature feature videos here on Shark Bites, please do give this video a like. It really helps out the channel and it's massively appreciated by me. Okay, enough of that. The bull shark. Let's go. The bull shark is a large coastal shark species belonging to the Carcharhinid family of sharks. They're distributed across tropical, subtropical, and temperate oceans around the world, both inshore and offshore, so they're pretty much everywhere. These sharks are bulky animals, and not only can they reach lengths of nearly four meters, they are very, very stocky. It's actually where they get their name from, almost appearing bullish with that stockiness, as well as that broad, flat snout. The name also comes from their behavior, with them often being cited as aggressive and unpredictable, but more on that later. So I just said to you earlier, these sharks are pretty much everywhere. And when I mean everywhere, I mean everywhere. <laughs> they can be found in deeper waters, shallower waters, both inshore and offshore, but most interestingly, they can be found in rivers. The bull shark is a urihaline species, which means it can live in both salt water and freshwater. Only about 5% of all shark species can survive in freshwater, so this is a pretty special adaptation. But how does it survive in freshwater? Well, one of the major hurdles that any urihaline shark faces is maintaining the correct balance between water and salt within their bodies. To prevent a huge intake of water through osmosis, the bull shark has to really quickly remove excess salts from its body, otherwise they would literally swell up and burst. To do this, they have some really impressive kidneys and a special gland known as the rectal gland. The kidneys produce loads and loads of urine, which allows them to remove salts and excess water when they need to. And the rectal gland helps them retain salts when they need to do that. When a bull shark is swimming around in fresh water, it's thought that they will urinate up to 20 times more than what they would have done had they been in salt water. That's a lot of wee. These amazing internal adaptations have allowed the bull shark to exploit habitats in which it would just be impossible for the majority of other sharks to live in. And we're not just talking talking about rivers that are close to shore here, guys. Bull sharks have occasionally been documented thousands of miles inland. There was a confirmed report in 1937 of a bull shark that had been found in Alton, Illinois. That's 1,700 miles from the nearest salt water in the Gulf of Mexico. Then there was another report of a bull shark that was found near Festus in Missouri. That's 900 miles from the Gulf of Mexico. The Mississippi isn't the only river system that they've been found in though. They've been found in river systems thousands of miles inland all across the world. I think one of the furthest confirmed distances was a bull shark that had made its way two and a half thousand miles in land up the Amazon River, which is just crazy. Although recent studies have revealed there is a time limit on how long they can actually spend in fresh water, and it's thought to be about four years. The reasons for this are a little bit unclear, but most scientists who are working on the topic think it's due to a lack of food. Eventually, these young bull sharks just outgrow their habitat and need to start eating more food, which is few and far between in some of these inland river systems. You'll notice I said young bull sharks there, and I say that because river systems play an important role at different life stages for these sharks. Adult female bull sharks will enter freshwater habitats to give birth to their young because it's a relatively safe place for them to spend those first few formative years of their lives. Out in the ocean, other shark species would likely predate on bull shark pups, but in river systems, they're a little bit safer. Saying that, I was getting absolutely minced by river predators when I played as a bull shark on Man Eater a little while back. Oh no, this is bad. This is not good. Did they get away? Oh, I didn't get away! <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you want some more man to content, by the way, guys. Anyway, young bull sharks also have another awesome adaptation where they've been shown to regurgitate their stomach contents to act as a distraction technique from predators so they can escape. How cool is that? So summarizing that, we've got the big female bull sharks using river systems to give birth to their young. And then we've got the juvenile individuals who are using those river systems as safe havens for the first few years of their lives. As the young bull sharks get older, they start to venture towards estuary and saltwater habitats around the coast, where they start to become gradually a little bit more tolerant of saltwater. When they head out to sea, they're feeding on a big range of animals and they're thought to be opportunistic predators. They'll eat bony fish, other sharks and rays, crustaceans, turtles, and even dolphins, they're not very fussy. 
Generally, they tend to eat in short bursts, but when food is scarce, the bull shark can actually slow down the digestion process within its own body. This means when they can't find enough food, they can survive for longer without eating another meal and don't end up starving. But when they bite down on their prey, whatever it is that they're biting down on doesn't really stand much of a chance. And that's because pound for pound, the bull shark has one of the most powerful bite forces of any shark species. Research has shown that a nine foot bull shark has a bite force of around 478 pounds. And when you directly compare that to a great white shark of a similar size, the bull shark comes out on top with the white shark bite force being only 360 pounds. Obviously a larger white shark will have a greater bite force than a bull shark due to its pure size and power, but pound for pound, the bull shark wins. It's even thought that this bite force stuff has turned into a bit of an evolutionary arms race among younger bull sharks. The younger individuals are being driven to have stronger bite forces to gain an advantage over other sharks. For example, it might give them a better chance at targeting larger prey. Bull sharks also often hunt in murky waters, so when they bite down, they don't let go in order to not lose that prey species in the murk. Compare that to a species like the white shark who tend to slash their prey and wait for it to bleed out, the bull shark doesn't do that, they just cling on. And this is probably what makes the bull shark a particularly dangerous species. You'll often hear about bull sharks being in the big three when it comes to shark attacks around the world, and the International Shark Attack file backs this up. Bull sharks sit in third place on the ISAF listings, which dates all the way back to 1580. According to the data, they've been responsible for 121 attacks on humans, 26 of which were fatal. And they sit behind tiger sharks and great white sharks in second and first place, respectively. We do have to take this data with a pinch of salt though, because confirmed attacks will always be skewed to shark species that are easily identifiable. And we're also relying on there to be witnesses of the attacks as well, most of which for great whites, tigers, and bulls would be close to shore. For example, the oceanic white tip shark sits way down that list in 15th, but it's likely that that shark species has attacked way more people down the years. It's just no one was there to witness it because it was way offshore. I think the bit that makes it tricky with bull sharks is that their bites are occurring in brackish waters where the visibility is really, really poor. You'll often read stories of bull shark attacks in rivers and estuaries, and it's likely because these sharks can't see very well in those habitats. Although that's not to say all of their bites are a case of mistaken identity because they are very well known for being a pretty ballsy and aggressive species of shark. As to why this might be is a bit more challenging to answer, but it might have something to do with their testosterone levels. Bull sharks are thought to have the highest testosterone levels of any animal. One bull shark was tested and was found to have 358 nanograms per millimeter of testosterone in its body. That's higher than a male African elephant during mating season, which sits at 64 nanograms per millimeter of testosterone. That's five times as much as a male African elephant during mating season. <laughs> so testosterone could be playing a role in their aggressive behavior, which may be having an impact on their tendency to bite humans. But it's always important to remember guys, the chances of you being bitten by a bull shark or any shark for that matter are astronomically low. When we flip it round, the bull shark is actually a pretty threatened shark species and it's listed as vulnerable on the IUCN red list. Because these sharks are often found in coastal inshore habitats, they are more susceptible to habitat degradation, pollution, and of course, overfishing. They're also massively under threat from climate change as important inshore habitats like salt marshes are just being decimated by changing ocean temperatures. So even though these bulls might seem pretty scary to us, they are really under threat from a whole host of different factors. And there we are everyone, that's your bull shark creature feature. I know bull sharks are probably going to be a lot of people's favorite shark species here on Shark Bites, so if I haven't mentioned any fact that you love about them today, make sure you let me know what it is in the comments. Also, were there any facts that you heard today that you've never heard before? If so, let me know below. I'm still making my way through the massive list of creature features you guys suggested for me, but if there's a particular shark that you still wanna see, make sure you comment it below. If I see a particular shark is cropping up loads, then I'm way more likely to do it, so comment it. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. It really helps the channel out every time you do so. And if you're not subscribed to Shark Bites yet, make sure you click that big red subscribe button below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.